Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Frame Rate is brought to you by Ford, featuring available Sync with My Ford Touch. Sync with My Ford Touch gets you to your destination with integrated turn-by-turn -turn directions and directional arrows displayed on screen. Check it out in the new 2012 Ford Focus and at Ford.com slash technology. And by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly, all streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to Netflix.com slash twin. Last year I wanted a pony. This year I want revenge. It's Frame Rate! Welcome to episode 56 of Frame Rate. I'm Tom Merritt. Hey, I'm Brian Brushman. I've and got the dick from Corey Coleman. Wait, who's that Corey Coleman from Spill.com? <laughs> that is Corey Coleman, creator and lead animator on OneSpill.com, the number one movie review site on the entire freaking internet. If you if you see if you see an animated movie review, and by which I mean the characters are animated, and it's got like six, seven, eight, nine, twenty digits on the number of views it's got, it was probably created by this man right here. How you doing, Corey Coleman? That's all a lie. <laughs> and by the way, I've been told to be Smart sounding and intellectual tonight. Yes, please do. Please well, do. The, my, my, I ju I, we just realized this before the show. My experience with Corey Doc, Corey Doc Coleman. I've given you your own <laughs> top level domain free of charge. Uh, with Corey, was when you guys did the NSFW show parody of Tech News Today. And frankly, yeah. uh, Corey outshone all of you. Oh, dude, he always does. He's our most popular guest on NSFW, and in fact, as soon as Frame Rate is over, we're going to be having him playing the lead in our very own NSFW holiday extravaganza where we portray Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I'm the reindeer. You're the reindeer. Yes. Yeah, so start drinking. <laughs> Where is the beer tonight? You need that red nose, brother. That's that's not till that's not that's not till in itself. Okay, Don't believe it. You were so rude to me. Didn't offer me a beverage. I got that. well here. I, mean, yeah, I, got, I, like, I, got a... I like how he invites you over to your house for one show and then like slips in another. Like oh, and all, you're also doing frame rate. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. I was, I'm just in saying. fact, you told me to come over for dinner. I didn't even know I was doing a show. It's a scam school bit. <laughs> and then he has me this jug of moonshine. Right? All right, give me that. That's good moonshine. Hey, man, what uh, what would be today's big story? This just in: the big story. YouTube has released the world's biggest videos of the year. This is, they do this every year. It's the biggest videos of the year. Guess guess what's at the top? Um, I would say the parodies of Rebecca Black's Friday. Ah, uh, you're a hopeful, hopeful man. No, just, just, just Rebecca Black. Uh, you know what though? They had to uh, pull off the uh, all the music videos from Vivo because otherwise the top ten videos on YouTube would have just been like music videos from J Lo because those are the thing. That's what everyone uses YouTube now. For, is, well, is watching music mind, videos. And, and, and that is the bit that is the really big story the real big story is that YouTube which we all perceive as the place where you watch funny cat videos or parodies or that kind of thing in fact uh, YouTube has completely supplanted MTV as the place you go to watch the music videos for the music you love and uh, I mean that is revolutionary that uh, it, keep in mind it makes sense too because with viral videos you may watch it and laugh once maybe forward it to your friends but music videos especially now that the flight to quality on YouTube has made these videos, uh, you know, high definition with good sound to them. They are the kind of thing that you will keep hitting replay over and over and over and over again, which is why all of a sudden you got these music videos creeping up on a half a billion views. What do you think of Nyan Cat coming in number five? Wait, which one? Nyan Cat. Oh, no, that's great. But that's another one. Nyan Nyan Cat's I one of the I thought Nyan Cat was going to top it, or at least. Close second to Rebecca Black. Got beat out by some babies and a dog 
And I don't even know what this number three is. Uh, Jack Sparrow. Oh, okay. The Lonely right, so Island let, video. Let me, ask, let me actually ask Corey okay, from I've been from sitting Spill. back here being good. I've been looking at myself. And I didn't know if I was supposed to say anything. No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah, I just I'm had trying to be a good boy, you know. Yeah, you're doing good. So so when you go to YouTube, yeah. do you go to watch actual music videos or do you go to watch hilarious videos of people getting kicked in the crotch? I don't go to YouTube. I'm still I'm still addicted to porn, man. Well, okay, you, know, right. <laughs> you know, that's all my computer is has on. No, you know what? I, I actually go to YouTube for a lot of things. I'm one of those YouTube multi-users. I'm not looking for one thing. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the guy that goes to YouTube because something has been recommended to me, whether it be funny or a cool music video or anything in between. Yeah, I don't go to YouTube. I, I think that's what you're saying, right? Is you go because somebody said, hey, look at this, and then you go there. But do you browse YouTube? Do you just like, I'm going to look at YouTube today? I, I do, but like I said, I'm usually, uh, I'm the one who's watching old stuff like movies that I've missed and don't want to watch the whole film. I just want to watch a clip. Mm. I, sometimes they have uh, shorts that they put on there that they've broken up into several pieces. Uh, there are movies that they have whole movies on that I've been wanting to check out. Like recently they have a whole movie for, uh, what is it, uh, Fantastic Planet. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, that's that's a really good point where I wish of all the things that YouTube has embraced, first of all, they've done a great job of working out partnerships with Vivo so that they're able to feature all these music videos that they know are going to be crazy popular. They've done a good job of culturing this, this blogosphere of people video blogging their lives. But the one thing they haven't done is what they're best at, which is like, I can mention a Mr. Show sketch that you've never heard of. And you're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, are you kidding me? Let me find it. And I can type in... Abraham Lincoln, Mr. Show, you know, pool table. And then all of a sudden there's there's that, that clip. Well, there's another thing that I do on YouTube is that sometimes I listen to whole albums. Like they might have, and I go to Groove Shark for this now, but they might have a, a song from the same album and just have all their videos up by people who posted them just to play. And I'll just play the whole thing sometimes just to listen to it. And you know, to elaborate on that, I think it's kind of cool that YouTube is evolving into becoming more mainstream in, 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 entertainment because I even heard that Disney has approved to have their Pixar movies yeah. shown on there. Yeah. So that leads me to this point here that I think YouTube has recognized that it's no longer suiting, it's no longer having to adhere to that thing of the attention span of the users only 30 seconds or a minute because there's a new site that, because I'm sure you know about it, or, or, or an app, not a site, that they call themselves the Twitter equivalent of video. They allow you to like shoot something with your phone for about a minute and a half. Right. And then you post it. Right. And you just can browse through there and see these minute and a half or less of video that are just of quick things. Yeah, well, and I know that I know that also um, uh, Fl uh, Flickr recently, or I, I say recently, two years ago, started allowing you to put up to 30 second clips. And their, their whole point was like, look, these aren't meant to be narratives. They're meant to be short snippets of your life that show up that, that means something to you the same way that, that a photograph does. And uh, it's, it's fascinating to see uh, YouTube adapt to that, but, but more fascinating to see that what makes it to the top. If you look at the top 10 of what they released, Tom, there is a insane variety uh, from, from Nancat, which is literally nothing but an animated gif with a, with a bizarre song underneath it, to Friday, which everybody did it just for the lulls, uh, compared to the highly produced, extremely expensive content that you see on the Vivo channel, it's amazing to me to see YouTube try to figure out exactly what it is, because, you know, nobody seems to know, including them. Yeah. All right, let's move on to another big story. Stop everything. It's another big story. Apple TV is the top connected set-top box, according to Strategy Analytics, which uh, looks at 8% uh, of U.S. households to find, a, uh, or it looks at households and have found that 8% of them use an Apple TV. Uh, they're at 7% in European homes. This isn't a shocker, but I, I, I guess I wouldn't have guessed that they had 8%. I would have thought it was lower. I, I got to tell you, man, I, I full on, and I can't believe I'm saying this, I full on do not believe that one in 12 people in the entire United States have an Apple TV. I cannot believe that. I refuse to believe that. You can't, so you, re there. you refuse to believe the, the numbers of strategy analytics? No, I mean, there's no way. There, there's, there's no way. I mean, I mean, this is a bad sample because, of course, we have a vested interest in it. But, of course, I have one and you have one. But, but you don't have an Apple TV, do you? No, I don't have an Apple TV, and I have never been to anybody's house that has an Apple TV. <laughs> and I know more than 12 people, so... Yeah. <laughs> what so about Roku? What about Roku? Uh, Western Digital Box? Boxy? 
uh, or Sony or a Logitech, like uh, set top box, like attached I to a television. Know, you are the only person I know who has a Roku. Uh, Colleen is the only person I know who has a Logitech, uh, or I guess, you, and you also have a Boxy as well. Well, but, yeah, but I have in, all of them. I mean, you're you're an outlier. You have all of them. I'm doing it but, for work. Uh, but here's the thing that that shocked me is nowhere included on this list are the really significant numbers. What percentage of American households have an Xbox 360 or a PlayStation 3? These are the devices that people are really using to access, you know, Netflix instant streaming on their or or like a Wii or an iPad, that kind of thing. Also, Apple announcing, well, reportedly, uh, had, had been meeting with TV executives about uh, a, a TV service being pitched to execs. So the idea being uh, they would have some sort of video service. I don't know. It would be like a subscription service or a streaming service or just an iCloud uh, for television. They are, they are doing a – they did announce today that they're going to have the ability to pause – a, uh, a television show on one device, pick it up on the next device. Uh, so that that's actually uh, cool. And, and official announcement from Apple, uh, they are going to give you the ability to complete a season, like complete my album on digital music. So if you buy two episodes of a series and then decide, you know what, I want to buy the rest of the season, you don't have to pay for those two episodes again by buying the season. You can just say complete my season and you get it at a discounted rate. Yeah, and, and first of all, that makes sense. That's something that we've all wanted for an extremely long time. But I'm just amazed. Eight uh, percent would be a tremendous share of of households, and that, that just I, I I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not for me to call into question what the survey said, but that is a phenomenally big number that I would love to see in context where actual game systems like the Xbox, Nintendo, Wii, and the PS3 rate in terms of that. And uh, strategy said that of people with connected TV players like an Apple TV, Apple has 32% of the market, which means that the rest of that market is totally fragmented. Uh, that, that there's, you know, Apple is leading the way by, by leaps and bounds. Roku is number two. Uh, yeah, no, I totally do believe that. I mean, that's uh, uh, within the, the streaming box land. That's a very, very small sample. And I do believe Apple can dominate. Uh, and I'm glad to see that they're not intentionally making things painful as far as trying to get through a series and not having to buy things multiple times. Uh, I mean, because on top of that, we have the, the whole fact that everybody doesn't want to rebuy The Wire after they bought the first five episodes. They don't want to rebuy those those episodes. <clears throat> so anything moving that direction is the right way. But I'm I'm blown away. I would have thought that the Roku would have been ahead of the, the Apple TV. Well, it explains so. why no one watches the show. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Well, because, you know, this show is targeted towards people who want to watch TV on the Internet. And if, you know, you're saying, like, no, well, nobody has these things, then nobody would want to watch the show. Uh, well, there's that then. <laughs> I just like the way Tom, you know, he kept coming back to it. Tom, I wish you'd stop lying. <laughs> Man, well, well, I, I, didn't I, can't, say, I, I still can't believe that, 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 that those not, numbers are true, Tom. No, that's not that. You know that's not the case. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just starting trouble. Uh, yeah, yeah, you are. Thank you. <laughs> Let's move on to yet another big story. Tuck in your bootstraps. It's yet another big story. So you know how we talked about last week uh, that Albert Pujols is to blame for your high cable bill? And we explained that whole connection. Uh, yeah. The NFL also is to blame for your high cable bill. And they've just renewed their deal with CBS, Fox, and NBC for nine more years. Okay, and keep in mind, reminder, and, and this, this is an awakening that you put into my mind. I never thought in, of, of terms of cutting the cord and stopping paying for cable in terms of ending my subsidy for content that I flat out do not watch. And I flat out do not watch sports of any kind, for, uh, unless I'm at a pub and uh, hanging out with friends. Sure, I'll cheer for one team or the other. I don't care. I don't have a dog in the fight. But the idea that 20 of the $80 I'm wasting every month on entertainment is going to an entire subgenre that I could care less about has really eaten away at me for the last couple of years. And seeing this deal just makes me mad. It makes me want to hurry up and end my subsidy for entertainment I don't care about. First of all, I think it's awful that you watch dog fights in pubs. That's just disgusting. But <laughs> okay, uh, that, say? that aside, uh, yeah, th this, this is one of the things that's going to drive up your bill. And now it's locked up for nine years. Nine years. They're not saying, you know what, let's just go for three or four. With this whole Internet thing, we may want to renegotiate. One of the reasons me may be, and I don't know this for sure, that they've got these Internet rights uh, included as exceptions to these deals. So, for instance, NBC, I didn't realize this, they stream every Sunday night football game for free 
on the internet. Absolutely free. You can just watch it. Uh, and they're going to do it with the Super Bowl this year as well. So you can you can just go and watch the Super Bowl on the internet. No charge. So, uh, okay, that's delightful, and that's good, and that's the way it should be. Um, but uh, but let me ask this. First of all, are you a big sports fan? I'm like you. I, I don't go crazy about sports unless I bet on sports, and I don't bet on sports, so... But I'm not going to be one of those guys out there with my body painted in the middle of freezing weather. <laughs> right. I'm, okay, but, I'm not a fanatic. But but answer, answer uh, like, uh, do you have do you have a traditional cable package or do you just watch stuff online or? I'm one of those guys who I only have cable because I'm like a dog. I like to have the cable on just to keep me company when okay. I'm lonely. But <laughs> in my lonely, sad in my, existence. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> when there's no more voices in the house, I just <laughs> cut on the TV. And, and really, I kind of just have it for that. But the more that I hear that I have to pay for someone else's entertainment right and and plus the way that we are be beginning to enter a culture of we have we can either have our entertainment streamlined to our taste car blanche or however right i'm thinking about being a person who will probably drop his service so uh, so the idea of cutting the cord is something you've been flirting with for a while then i have been i have i have that's just uh, like i said i i with, with having you to watch television online or or watch it streaming you usually have to do a little work to program it yourself and sometimes I just like things just come on, and that's the only reason why I've had cable this long. Right, right. Well, I mean, it's it's amazing how hard it is to break the programming that you have from you know you're so accustomed to you know that's what's on right now. It is, it is. It's it's, it's almost like I'm it's almost like I'm a battered wife to my TV. You know, I, I it's it's <laughs> abusing me, but I won't leave it for some reason. So see when I but when I got digital cable, that's when I broke that pattern because it was too hard to just pick a channel and leave it on because there were 500 of them. That didn't happen to you, huh? To me? Yeah. Well, that's all those channels that we have, and this is going to say a lot about my sexuality here, but I only I find myself only watching mostly Cartoon Network and uh, uh, HGTV. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> HG, HGTV will turn you into the most metrosexual guy in the world if you're not careful. I have to say, you know what? That is one of the exceptions. You're right. HGTV will suck you in. You have no idea. All of a sudden, you've watched six episodes of Remodeling it's, a House. You don't know why. You know what it is? It's because you have this impulse. You just sit in your house thinking how messy it is and what a terrible person you are because you don't have a clean house. But then it's like, okay, I'm not actually going to get up and vacuum, but I'm going to sit here and watch other people vacuum, paint, clean up, and simplify other people's houses. And I'm going to get that same sense of joy of like, oh, your house is so much nicer well, now. And they're they masters like, of the tease, right? They just like, well, i, I got to find out how he cleans up that mess in the shed. I'm but stick around. Exactly. You see, see, Tom, you didn't have that. Go back to Tom right there. All right. Like, Tom, see, you didn't have that sweater before you started watching HGTV, but after you started watching it, you did. You had a cocktail in your hand. Your nails were, like, really filed down and polished and everything. It was... Yeah. yeah that, that was, where did that come from? I don't know, but I was watching HGTV. And it just it appeared. Was. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, it does that to a person. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's take a quick break and uh, thank our sponsor, Ford, featuring Sync with My Ford Touch. One of the great features of Sync is Sync Services. We recently took Sync Services for a test drive. Check it out. Hey, Tom Aaron here. We're going to take off from the Twit Brick House in the 2012 Ford Focus. How are we going to get there? We're going to try out the new Sync Navigation features. Okay, so if you plan ahead, you can actually use Google Maps and MapQuest or the mobile app Sync Destinations to plan your destination ahead of time, and it'll be available for you in the car. I didn't plan ahead that well, so I'm going to show you how you do it when you just start off from scratch. Navigation. Navigation. 460 Kenilworth Drive, Petaluma. When ready, press the voice button and then say set as destination. Set as destination. Setting destination. Maybe you can look at it. All right, let's go. In one-tenth of a mile, turn right. See, it just tells me. Turn right onto Kenilworth Drive. So we had this weird little U-turn there, but map showed me where to go. Not a problem. Your destination is ahead on the right. There it is. Play dog play. Just like it said, destination on the right. 
You have arrived at your destination. On the right, route guidance is now finished. So that's how Ford Sync with My Ford Touch gets you to your destination with integrated turn-by-turn -turn directions, arrows on the screen. You know exactly where you're going. It's available in the 2012 Ford Focus, and you can find out more about these Ford technologies at Ford.com slash technology. I'm going to pick up my dog now. Hey, buddy. Is that the first time Sawyer's on the show? Oh, no. Sawyer has his own show. If you search for him on YouTube. Well, but, he's uh, the first time on this show. Finally, he's made it as one. Finally, yet. yeah, in a commercial. Put it on his IMDb. It's his first commercial deal. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we thank Ford for their support of Frame Rate. Uh, sh okay, so I, I, I don't know if you noticed this, Brian, but I did a little messing with the, uh, the lineup here. I uh, did not notice, so, so you just drive. You tell okay. me where we're headed so, and I'm ready to go. Remember last week we talked about how we kind of need to change the categorization because we're talking about these streaming services that have film, that have movies and TV shows. What I did is I, I, I put all of the TV-oriented stuff, all of the set-top box stuff, like the Apple TV and all that. Put that in tube tops because that makes sense, right? It's on top well, you, of your you TV. You watch it on your tube, uh, even though, let's face it, nobody you know has a tube television anymore. We all no, have those. It's, yeah, it's just like, a little retro fun. I, I didn't know what to do with the streaming services because interference is still going to be about things to watch on the web. So I put all the streaming services in film film, but we may need a new name. For film film? Well, if we're just going to have all the streaming services in there. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, that's a really good question. I'm going to say for right now, it, it, when I say streaming video, people think of movies. So I'm going to say keep it in film film for the moment. Well, in that case, it's time for film film. And, of course, what is an episode of Frame Rate without a couple of updates on what's going on with Netflix? Uh, they have agreed to a U.K. streaming deal with the BBC and have updated their iPad app only a month after updating their Android app. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm more interested in the UK, U.K. streaming deal than, than updating the app. That doesn't surprise me. Anytime you launch something, you're going to have to rejigger it when it gets out. But, Wait, uh, you're more interested in the deal that you can't take advantage of because you don't live in the country? than yes, the app I get update the on the tablet that you don't own. Absolutely, because I get the emails from people who are in that country who remind me to stop talking about Netflix because we don't have it in our country. <laughs> the more countries that have the Netflix, the less email I get. So it's the second story that affects me more than the first. Did you yeah. just say regigorate? Re re regigorate. It's a word that was okay. uh, from the ancient Greek to gigger. Would you call me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it's pronounced. Moving on. I think it's pronounced Giger, uh, and he did the art for Alien. Yeah, that was that guy. Yeah. yeah. I refer I refer to call him H. I. Gigero, but I'm sorry. All right. All right. Uh, let's move on to a couple of stories that are going to hit close to Brian's heart. Uh, HBO Go coming to Cablevision and Time Warner Cable. Your long national nightmare is over, Brian. <laughs> Dude, have you ever played with the HBO Go app on the iPad? I don't have an iPad, so I have not. You do have an iPad. You want? You came on NSFW. You talked about how you wanted to get the kind of pen that you could draw on the like iPad. Like, you just gonna sit there and tell me what I got? Okay, all right, all right. Well, all right. I, but no, the, I don't. I don't have an iPad. You I'm ready have for six iPads. iPads. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you want one? I'm selling them out the truck of my car. No, I. I my, my mama has a seat now. She wants to get me one for Christmas. Okay, but I hear rumor. Well. That the iPad 3 is coming out in February? Yes. And so they're going to premiere it here on frame rate. Well, that's if they, the if they follow, no, if they follow the pattern, you're right. They always announce a new one in January or February, and then it goes on sale like March or April. Okay. So, but the important thing is like we were so stoked about HBO Go and the fact that you could watch all of the HBO on demand. If you're an HBO subscriber, you can watch all the HBO on demand content. You can do this on your laptop, on your, okay. on, on, your, on your laptop or your iPad. Uh, but then the problem was I downloaded the app, and, of course, Time Warner wasn't participating. So uh, I'm not going to confirm or deny that I maybe called a friend of mine whose name uh, is Smom Barrett and uh, asked what his login was because he was on Comcast and is on Time Warner. But my experience was amazing, and Smom Barrett's uh, login made me sad that I couldn't what have it all What a stupid name. <laughs> yeah, Smom Barrett? <laughs> the Smom Berries taste like Smom Berries. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, is I'm stoked because I really enjoyed it. But the, the, what this means, though, is I'm going to have to resubscribe for a month or two on HBO so that I can go back and watch all of the, the Boardwalk Empires and get caught up on that One kind of thing. One of my favorite thing. shows. Yeah, yeah, that was fantastic. Did you watch Game of Thrones? 
I watched about three of them, and then I got so pissed off I couldn't watch anymore. Are you I serious? Take, I had to take a break. If 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 you had if you had George R. R. Martin rage after three episodes, then maybe it's too much. Show no, for you I, to I'm going to pick back up with it. I was just very hurt, and I, mm -hmm. yeah, I needed some time. But, okay, all right. Yeah. All right. But it's a great need time to heal. Uh, NBC offering full season holiday catch up for new and returning series online. Uh, if you're interested in Up All Night, Whitney, or Grimm, they are among the shows that you can stream for free. NBC.com. I mean, this is kind of not that big of a deal because you know supposedly you should be able to do this all on Hulu. But there's no like 28 day waiting period. They're saying they're they're trying to promote it as like, hey, everything that we did in the first half of the season is up there. So during the holiday break, when we're doing nothing but reruns online, go catch up at NBC.com. This is one of those moments where, on the one hand, you're insulted like, oh, this is a special thing that finally I get to get caught up on an, an episode. But on the other hand, at least it's a step in the right direction. Even though it's windowed, even though it's a case where, like, they know they're not making any money on any new material anyway, at least they're doing what people want. And for that, I certainly applaud their efforts. Well, yeah, they're doing what's in their best interest, which is I, I don't understand this eight-day or even 28-day waiting period to put stuff online because what you want to do is get people caught up so that they'll want to watch the night it comes out. And when you like do it with an eight-day waiting period, it's like just enough time that they'll never get caught up and they'll never watch your show because they'll just stay behind. Right, exactly. Well, and, and at least they're actually acknowledging that like, oh, I bet you would like to get caught up on the shows that you watch on, online. So a, again, it's a baby step, but it's a step in the right direction, so I applaud them. Let's move on to Tube Tops. Video streaming on game consoles up 7% over last year. Now, do you believe this number, Brian? I do, because this is the thing. I, I and, and keep in mind, maybe there is... It's from Nielsen, too, not Strategy Analytics. Maybe that's why. Now, 8% of households, you're looking at what? You got like 100 million households, and 8% of them for the Apple TV story, you're looking at 8 million households. Maybe I do believe that, I guess. But, uh, but certainly, you're looking oh, at... Now you do. Now I do. Now that I actually examined the mathematics in, in my head. But I was that was a staggering number at the time. But uh, given the fact that probably, what, 30, 50 percent of households have some one of the qualifying streaming video game consoles on them, uh, this totally makes sense. If you already have the device in your house, this is your dipping your toe into the water that will get you to start watching Netflix instant streaming and all the other services that we keep talking about on the show. And that's what the so, game console right. manufacturers <laughs> want. Yeah, go ahead, Corey. I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you you look like a small Barrett. <laughs> well, no, he, he doesn't look anything like Small Barrett. Small like, Barrett looks nothing I'm sorry, like Tom Merritt. Uncanny resemblance. I'm so sorry. I, I do, do do not bring that up because that would be a violation of the terms <laughs> I'm of sorry. service. I'm sorry. He's a handsome guy. I don't know what's wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> do you have Fair. a game console, Corey? I have every game console out there. Now, do you watch uh, streaming video? When you watch Netflix Instant Streaming, do you watch it on your computer or one of your game consoles? That is why I was also calling Tom a liar because I didn't think that they had figured out. Tom, just kidding. They, no, the <laughs> thing is that I didn't think that they had figured in gaming consoles because I, too, watch a lot of things on my PS3 and on my Xbox. When I had Netflix, and I'm probably going to get it back again, I'm one of those people that got mad at Netflix for a while, but uh, uh, I was watching videos all the time on my PS3. Yeah. So, so, and, that, and that's the thing is what I like about game consoles is that, you know, there's plenty of muscle behind it, graphic muscle in order to keep the stream. And, and again, maybe this is total marketing hype that, that I'm perceiving it this way, but I certainly do perceive it that I'd rather watch on a game console than like a Roku box, even though I'm sure the Roku is fine and delightful. Uh, there's something about the, 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 the butter smooth deliciousness of the Xbox interface <laughs> that I really dig. Why are you laughing at my butter smooth? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm enchanted by that. No. <laughs> I, it just seems like, yes, if I have a, an appliance or a device in my house, I want it that's going to give me multiple uses, and those multiple uses are going to work very well, and that's why I love my PS3 for that, because I play lots of games, you know, and it just streams video perfectly. Yeah. And it also plays DVDs and bumps up the quality of them, too. And that, and that is a good point, because if you if you do randomly want to be like, hey, let me throw Tron Legacy in here or whatever. By the way, Tron Legacy, now on Netflix since the streaming. Totally watched it again. Hey! Yeah, yeah, watch the, the advantage of Roku, it's very simple, right? You know easily how to get to whatever it is, whether it's Hulu Plus or Nick or Netflix or whatever. Uh, but you're right. I mean, if you're going to spend more than ninety nine dollars or sixty dollars, whatever the cheapest Roku is, you want something that's going to do more than one thing. Uh, what I thought was interesting in this Nielsen study too, Xbox 360 streaming video accounts for fourteen percent of the console's active use, fifteen percent of the active use of the PS3, 
and 33% of the use of the Wii. So a third of the time when people are using the Nintendo Wii, they're using it to watch video. I absolutely believe that because that's that's the exact same thing I have with my Xbox 360 in my living room. And it's what I'm about to have as soon as I get the Wii set up in the upstairs room for the kids. Because now that there's, you know, a kid zone that they can go nuts in and they can totally unsupervised watch whatever movies they want. The sooner the sooner I can get them to quit bothering me while I'm playing Orcs Must Die and Star Wars The Old Republic, the better. Now, those of you out there, uh, the one of you that cares about 3D, uh, YouTube... <laughs> on TV, video app coming to Samsung, launched today, brings you 3D videos from the internet to your Samsung Smart TV. Um, good on you, mate. Yeah, so you, you are going enjoy, to really enjoy that. Uh, enjoy watching Avatar. Why are, they, why, why are they pushing this 3D stuff so hard? I mean, they have just, they are putting it out there like this is the, like it truly is the next big thing. Either they have fooled themselves or they are trying to fool us, but the reality is 3D has flatlined because you don't want a room looking like you're the school of the blind just trying to watch a simple movie. They have to get rid of the glasses <laughs> if they really want people to, like, catch on to yeah. this whole 3D trend. The industry said, look, we just made everybody buy new televisions because of high def. What do we do next? I got it. 3D. And then the, the movie industry said, that's awesome because we're breaking it in with these 3D movies at the theater. So then we can sell everybody 3D versions of the movies they already bought. And we'll all be rich. Problem is nobody wants. And, and the weird part is, they're actually that's the right impulse for them to have in order to uh, to try to go for some kind of unique novelty that engages people to go to the movie theater instead of watching at home. But but I don't know that 3D is it. I mean, let's face it, we've been seeing 3D movies in movie theaters for 60 years now. It's ridiculous. And I think everybody's, everybody's too, and nobody's buying them. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. I, everybody's going to have 3D in their te television soon and not even know it because that's what they're right. doing. They're <laughs> They'll just, never use it. They're just putting it in the television, and you get it home, and you're like. Huh, 3D. Yeah, I'll never use that. What ifs? Yeah. What uh, Intel's wireless display media streaming solution, uh, YDI, uh, has, uh, it will be, uh, has been announced to be in the LG Cinema 3D smart TVs. Uh, the idea is that you can get 1080p video, so the highest quality of high-def video, uh, streamed through a Wi-Fi connection from a, an Intel CPU-powered laptop uh, and it takes away, the, you know, theoretically, it takes away the need for a box. You just have your laptop with all your video streaming there, and boom, you just push it to the television. Now, I've seen a couple of demonstrations of this. The video really is impressive, and it's something that I hope does catch on. But, but essentially, this is the same thing that, uh, what is it on the iPad that throws the video over to the well, that's TV? that's AirPlay, yeah. Right. It's essentially AirPlay, but for your laptop. But with, uh, AirPlay, like with AirPlay, you actually have to have the Apple TV hooked up. Right? Okay. And that's the only thing it works with. With Wi-Di, the idea is it'll be a standard like Wi-Fi, so it'll come built into televisions that have Wi-Di. And you won't, have to, you won't have to have some device that you go and buy. It'll just, it'll just be there. So this is one of those, like, early days of negotiations, figuring out what the standard's going to be. Yeah, exactly. Eventually we'll get there. Because I, I do think that in another five years, whatever, whatever most popular device you have, you'll be able to push video wirelessly to whatever big screen happens to be in front of you. But this is another case, like, let's say Wide Eye is the one, and this is the anointing of it. Uh, we had talked previously about how it the the purchase cycle for televisions is so long. Even if this turns out to be the right standard, I'm not going to see it for another seven years because it's going to be six, seven years before I buy another television. Yeah, <laughs> I like I like having a cheering section here. This is good. What he said. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I think that's a, uh, a a lot of people's thought, and that's why they're pushing 3D. And now they're scrambling around trying to find another system and, and a, another advantage. Uh, they thought maybe smart apps might be it, internet-connected television might be it. Uh, they're still kind of casting about for that. Uh, right. Roku got another update, uh, so they added some more games. A lot of people don't realize uh, that you can play games on the Roku, but they, uh, they added... Uh, more of the motion games. They already had Angry Birds. Uh, now you can get Downhill Bowling 2, Castle Warriors, and Frisbee Forever. These are Wii-like games. Uh, they're all designed to work with the motion control game remote that's sold separately. They also added MKV Playback. Uh, that's a video file format. So uh, you can plug in a USB drive that has any MKV files on it and play those directly on okay, the can Roku. We, can we call this out for what it is? Like, is, is there any... 
when I saw .mkv, I thought, oh, so now when you download pirated movies, they'll be easy to play on, my, on your Xbox. Is there any well-known use for MKVs besides the, the way you get a lot of movies for people who do the naughty thing of piracy? Well, you know, I don't, I don't know if, uh, if, if there's anything as successful as MKV playback. <laughs> That's uh, certainly but, what it's best known for. Yeah, <laughs> but no, there's no two ways about it. I think you're right. Uh, there are uh, there are definitely legitimate uses of MKV. Uh, there, you know, home videos can be shot and, and recorded in MKV. I'm not sure how many people are actually using it for that, but that would be the reason to say, well, we shouldn't outlaw MKV or MKV playback. No, 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 no. and I'm not saying that at yeah, all, yeah. but it's like it, this is one of those cases where, where uh, these companies who create these devices, they have a monetary interest in providing people with what they want, and when the majority of people, when they see an unmet need, uh, you know, they're 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 gonna fill it. And it's well, you not could say the same about H.264, right? You could say like, well, you know, what is H.264 best for? It's best for piracy. And at one time, that was absolutely true. But now we have a lot of videos available legitimately in that Correct. format, and so Correct. you know, and MKV might someday become that same thing. Yes, and I hope so, too, because it was really weird in the early days of MP3s to see the demonization of a format yeah. before they understood that... Uh, it's very know, easy that to demonize a format for being used for something. Like like BitTorrent, like Torrent itself. The exactly. protocol itself is not illegal or meant to be used illegally. It just happens to be really popular for that sort of thing. But there are lots of very legitimate uses for torrents, uh, including you know updating games. A lot of games update themselves using a torrent so that they save on bandwidth. Uh, we even have uh, Twitch shows put out as on, on BitTorrent so that you can get them and save bandwidth. Finally, uh, Myriad Alien View. This is a weird one. Bringing Google TV apps to existing HDTVs and set-top boxes. So it's not now, Google TV. It's an HTML5 layer developed behind Alien Dalvik, which is an emulator for Android. The upshot of all of this, if you don't understand it, is you can take apps out of the Android marketplace that you would buy for your phone and put them on the television. Okay, but, but like running what... Oh, now, I can't believe this sentence is about to come out of my, my mouth, but television's running what OS? Well, it's this particular television, the Alien View. Oh, Myri gotcha. Myriad's new saying. Alien View is a customizable OEM platform. So you gotcha. have to have a television that's running Alien View. So they, they give this to the, the, the TV manufacturers, but and then they add support for this. So this is just an emulator for a relatively obscure kind of a uh, eh, well, television OS. No, what, what it is is it's, it's, a, it's a super back-end thing, right? You want to sell this to manufacturers to, to put on the TV, but then what the TV manufacturers will say is, hey, we not only have apps on our television, we have all your Android apps. They'll run on your television. So if you got an Android phone, all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, really? All these apps I have on my phone, I can just put on my TV? That's kind of cool. So that's a, okay. So this is a case where, like, before this is sort of like a middleware type thing. Before we actually see Android built into television sets, this is like a middle ground that people can throw in. Well, uh, uh, yeah, kind of. Although it's totally independent of Google. It's not not a strategy to say, oh, well, we'll do this first before we make Google TV available. This isn't the answer to Eric Schmidt saying Google TV will be on all the TVs you see in the stores in six yeah, months. It's a step in that direction. Because, it's uh, a step in that direction that has nothing to do with it, – it's, it's a different person walking, Brian. Right. Okay. You got it. <laughs> But, but it's like, but, but the point is, like, uh, look, this is another case. You can tell which way the wind is going, is, is I guess what I'm trying Maybe. to say. Maybe. Well, we'll see how many manufacturers pick it up. It's yeah. a way for them, it's a way for manufacturers to be independent of Google and still have the ability to run Android apps. Yes. Let's take a quick break. Thank our sponsor, Netflix. Netflix.com slash twit gives you 30 days free. You can watch Netflix on all these devices we've been talking about. Roku, Apple TV, uh, lots of television apps. Of course, your Xbox, your Wii, your PS3. Uh, so if you'd like to try it for free, and maybe you're like Corey. You're just like, you know what? I got rid of that stuff. I got, I, got a, I got mad. You can come back, try it again for free, or if you already have it, pass this URL along to a friend. Anybody can use it. Netflix.com slash twit. We thank them for their support of frame rate. Time for Interferon. Interferon is things you can watch on the web. Uh, specifically things that are only available on the web, I think, uh, to differentiate yeah, it from the, the streaming service. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, so I liked, I, I like weird stuff like this, but I liked this uh, uh, festive greeting from Syriac, a British animator. This is kind of his holiday card to the Internet. 
And we featured one of his videos before, the, the weird stuff with the multi-headed llama running around or the lamb and all that stuff. But this is these are the festive holiday <laughs> greetings from Syria. <laughs> I'm feeling the love. Corey, do you feel more festive after that? Oh, my gosh. I feel like I'm ready to get drunk on eggnog and kill myself. Oh, I'm turned on right now. <laughs> you better watch out, bro. I'm about to jump you, man, after watching that. You might have been the Chipmunks movie that I just saw. <laughs> Did you just watch the Chipmunks yeah, movie? Yeah, it was just like, just like that, yeah. At least that was going on in my head when I was watching that movie. <laughs> you went to your safe place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it's a right. chip rack. That was much safer than what you saw on the screen right there, <laughs> yes. hanging out with those chipmunks. Uh, okay, so we also got um, a couple of things on Interferon. Let's see. Uh, New oh. Red Letter Media review coming for Kingdom of yes. the Crystal Skull. Uh, and let me tell you, first of all, you know how much we love Red Letter Media's reviews. Uh, the, I mean, you, you've seen these, right? Right? Corey, you I have not. That? Are you kidding me? You never saw the Phantom Menace review, the hour-long review? Oh, that? that, yes, I have, where the guy's narrating everything that is wrong. Yes, like exactly. Like I need to be told, it's but a, yes. It's, a, it's yes. a scathing indictment of the movie, yes, right? Yes. And it's like uh, they, they essentially become these, these bizarre, like, hour-long basic tutorials in film direction where he just savages the, the, the people doing it. The new one, the, this actually a trailer for the upcoming release of the new review and of course it's got uh, it's got uh, Plinkett now they do an interesting thing on this one this the guy you're seeing right now uh, the character of Mr. Plinkett was actually in a movie and there was this one guy who played him in the movie but the other guy who is either the director or the producer of the movie is the one who uses the character with the voice narration that we know and love so the, the in the in the trailer for this you see the emperor come in and he's looking at movie version of Plinkett and eventually figures out that he's got the wrong address and leaves while meanwhile so your next review is here at last my, my next review I, I don't know what you're talking about what why your next movie review for the internet? What's an internet? I don't do movie reviews. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the emperor goes and finds the real Plinkett, and uh, the uh, what do you think the next movie to be reviewed and savaged by Mr. Plinkett is? Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. How did you know? Because I said I, it. Oh, oh sh shut up, Tom! I'm psychic. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's <laughs> deaf. A, a psychic parade. <laughs> Did you really know that? Of course. Oh, okay, all right. I'm super I don't know excited. What kind of underwear you're wearing right now? You crazy? <laughs> I do. Uh, He's wearing right. crystal skull underwear. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wearing underwear. Uh, also, there's something that happened. This is the first time that I've ever seen this occur. Uh, there is a trailer for a trailer. And I, I don't know that I've ever seen this before. And if we, it's hmm. only 30 seconds long, but it's for Ridley Scott's new movie, Prometheus, set inside the Aliens universe. And uh, I'll tell you, I never thought a trailer for a trailer could get me super excited, but take a look at this. So here we are. I'm back again. Action! It's epic. Not by just definition of the scale of sets, it's about the very grand ideas and notions, the surprising things that will appear to be small, and yet will be enormous. Is that unreal? Come in. Well, you, I, I've definitely seen previews before trailers that look just like this, but sure. the tease at the end is what puts the icing on the cake, right? Coming to yeah. iTunes trailers. I saw a different version. I mean, and I'm not making a joke here. I thought I'd seen a version where it just had Ridley Scott between footage of the movie, like epic, badass, amazing. I brought you <laughs> my North Face. <laughs> <laughs> you want it? You love me? It's a, it's <laughs> Give me money. I'll have sex with you. Do you have me? No, <laughs> you right. no, I don't know. I'm looking I forward to version. it, though, right? I mean, this. Oh, totally. Totally. Absolutely. Is this that music? the Halo what's movie? That? What's that? This is the Halo movie, right? No, 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 no. This is this is a alien movie. I'm almost certain. Well, they keep saying that this is connected to the alien universe, but it has no connection to the actual alien movies. Except oh, that's for that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I still know what they mean by that because they asked really Scott that, and he's, he, you know, they always got to use these trivial words like, 
Well, if you don't notice, you'll see strands of DNA in the film that connected to the original movie, but it's not a prequel. I, was, I don't know what he's talking about. No, but I, no, that's fine. I'm down with that. I like connected worlds. Like, that's what's great about listen, listening and reading uh, Stephen King stuff is knowing, you know, seeing those brief little connections that it's all to other one stories. Universe, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. He's, but he's, you know, really Scott has always wanted to do something like that, I think, because he's been talking about doing a Blade Runner sequel. Yeah. But I think... It, there was talk of it not being an, an actual sequel that it would just but be just set in that same world. Universe. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm down for that. I think that's delightful. We should have more of that stuff. Yeah, I'm All looking right. forward to this. And, and those little clips, they, they make it look good. Let's check in on the NSFW show frame rate, summer movie draft. I, I mean, winter movie draft. You know, whatever winter season movie. it is. I don't know. Yeah. Dude, I hold on to my slight lead with tenacious spirit uh in fact uh, just now in the chat room you can tell i'm leading right now still by 67 million dollars uh it's only a matter of time till tom ch takes over and runs away with this thing sarah has massive massive ground to pick up from 68 million all the way to you're going to be at 400 million by the time you're done tom uh somebody in the chat room was complaining that he thought i was cheating because i was still accruing money even though some of my movies were older than four weeks old. But uh, but I don't know where he thought that rule came from. That's as far as I it's know. It's because the last movie, we only take the first four, we take the next four weeks. So after right. Girl with the <laughs> Dragon Tattoo, we only go with four weeks of, of gross after that. But all the other movies, it's from the beginning of the draft, October 21st, until four weeks after the last movie. And that's one of those things where it's like, we want you to factor that in when it comes to making your decisions on whether you want to buy an early movie or a late movie, because the bigger hits tend to be later in the season. And But then again, if you take an earlier hit, if it's a sleeper hit that goes all summer long, you can actually walk away. For example, Puss in Boots has worked out really well for me. I think it's over like $120 million now. Did you ever think you'd say those words? I hoped I would one day. The last two movies come out this week in our winter movie draft. Not the last two movies ever. The Adventures of Tintin, which is mine. It's, it's going to be huge. It's going no. It's not. It's going to be like, no, like ten it million. It, uh, no way. No and way. The girl it's with the huge. dragon tattoo. Now you can say it's going to be huge. Uh, no, girl with dragon tattoo will be huge, but not huge enough to save Sarah. Um, All right, uh, let's let's go to an expert, Corey. All right, which is going to be the biggest of the upcoming releases? I am going to go with Tintin, and I'll tell you why. Because Tin Tin, first of all, is a family film. The yes. girl with the dragon tattoo is a rated R movie, so Tin Tin is going to appeal to a bigger uh, holiday audience. And then Tin Tin has a bigger release, has a wider release. I think it's about a thousand screams more than the girl with the dragon tattoo. That's a really good point. So why did Alvin only make twenty five million? That was my big bet. I mean, I got Twilight. That's what's carrying me because it's made you know crazy two hundred sixty six million. It's going to get close to three hundred before the end of it. But I need more than that to catch Brian's three fifty nine. I thought Alvin was going to make me a cool forty or fifty, and it's got a ways to go to make that. Oh, you asking me? Yeah. Because. He's a bitch. That's what. No, because <laughs> well, there's been talk that there. If you looked over the 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 last few family movies, there's been a trend where they just haven't been yeah. making much as anticipated. Some of them are good movies, and they still haven't reached that high. Like Puss in Boots, Happy Feet Two is one that gross about fifty nine. Fifty nine million half. domestic. So it was predicted that what was the number one movie this past weekend? It was Sherlock. It was, uh, Sherlock. Yeah, so it's predicted that Sherlock, just riding off the strength and anticipation of the Avengers leading back to Rod, Rod, Robert Downey Jr., mm. they figured that would be the highest grossing film this past weekend. So it's just, I, I think Alvin just being the, in the trend of being a family movie, that's what hurt it. Yeah, well, especially like if I'm going to take my kid to go see a movie and it's the choice between the Muppets and uh, and Chipwrecked, I mean, I, I think the Muppets being established, well, I would rather go see the Muppets three, four more times in a row in the movie theater rather than go and watch well, Chipwreck? The Muppets is an exception, but the Muppets was way out the picture by the time Chipwreck came in. Muppets was even out the top five. But the Muppets wasn't, look, was they didn't put it in that trend of family films that we're talking about that have kind of catered off because the Muppets is not a CG animated film. Right. They're a brand that doesn't rely on that, and people have wanted that for years. So the, the Muppets have done extremely well because their budget was just not crazy big. Mm. Right. You know, it's a bunch of fabric. Come on. Right. And let's point out Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, even though it premiered this past week, only premiered in IMAX. 
So right, it's, it's it, not it's not wide release. And uh, let me, I'm going to draft on NSFW. So show. Sarah oh. Sarah Lane's sitting at 68 million, but she's got Girl with the Dragon tattoo and the rest of Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol to go. It's still a tall order to catch you, Brian. 359 million. I don't think she's going to be able to do it now. I yeah. have to make uh, 68 million to catch you out of Adventures of Tintin and whatever's left in the tank uh, for Alvin and Twilight. I think you. I think you're gonna do it. Now uh, the question. It's gonna be is, gonna be by I, the scruff of my neck if I do. I, I really think it's gonna be a tall order for me to catch. It's gonna be you. a tight race. I'm way stoked about it. Yeah. Uh, hey, talking about seeing a movie. What are you watching? You mean it's time for what we're watching? Yeah, that's what I hope. <laughs> you're trying to avoid that, huh? You know, I haven't actually been watching a lot. I wanted to go see Sherlock Holmes, and I never uh, got a chance to go out and see it. Uh, I've been watching Top Chef. I'm a fan, so that's just kind of normal. Not making a big deal. It's not the best season ever. I'm not raving about it. I, st I keep trying to watch Hell on Wheels, and nothing turns me off about it. It's well done. I like the actors. No, I like the no atmosphere. Outsurge. There's no compelling character that's that the just opposite sucks thing. Like, like a black yeah, hole. There's nothing that, that draws me in. Uh, either I'm watching Sanctuary, which I, I think is somewhat underrated. I, I enjoy it uh, quite a bit. But, yeah, there's, there's really – I've been playing a lot of Star Wars The Old Republic, frankly. Yeah, well, good on you. And, uh, and sure I'm, enjoy, I'm not, not trying to rub it in Olympics. your face, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> good on you. <ya. laughs> good on you, mate. So uh, I went over the weekend. I drove my brother out to San Diego and because uh, he's got a four-month contract with Sony Entertainment to work on uh, their new video game over there. But uh, what we got in just in time – to go see uh, uh, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. And the way it was sold to me, and no, you know, don't blame John because this is what he was told. What he's told is that it was only out in IMAX this week and that if you went and saw it in IMAX, you would also get to see six minutes of The Dark Knight Rises. I'm like, Sucker. well, hell yeah, let's go, right? <laughs> but then we go there and I'm looking and I'm looking at it as everything starts. I'm like, hey, um, I don't remember IMAX uh, having a digital projector. And then uh, and that, that digital projector being clearly like 4K spread out so wide that I could see individual pixels. You and saw LIMAX. It is LIMAX. How is this a thing I haven't heard of? They're taking IMAX, a brand which meant only one thing, exceptional presentation quality, 70 millimeter prints, unbelievable fidelity that you can't see anywhere else. And... And LIMAX, the fake IMAX, is actually worse than seeing it at the theater because they take the same 4K signal and spread it out wider so you can actually see individual pixels on the screen, which I've never experienced before. The hell is that, Tom? Yeah, that's, you know, they wanted to put more IMAX theaters out there, but it's too expensive to build the real thing. Uh, so they just said, well, what if we just have the screen be the same proportion? And then we can call it IMAX because it's the IMAX aspect ratio, which is... I don't know about y'all, but I, I just think that's wrong. This is how great brands get destroyed. Cadillac used to mean one thing. It meant a super expensive car that you could wish someday to get. Nowadays, there's cheap Cadillacs, right? And it's like, uh, used to be like, uh, there are certain brands that have preserved their brand value because you can't ever get a cheap Rolex unless it's a knockoff and a fake. Rolex has always maintained its ability to be a high-ended watch. This business with devaluing the IMAX brand it has totally betrayed me. I, I, I'm, I don't, I'm done with IMAX. I only see movies at one place. I say this every time. I only see movies at one place from now on, and that's the Alamo Draft House. Because that one has not been devalued yet. Brian, we're not sponsored by the Alamo Draft House. What, 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 what do you stop you lying? Stop what you... lying. You will go back to the IMAX. You will see a movie there. You were acting like the IMAX don't, they, like the, the real IMAX theaters don't exist anymore. They, they raped you or something. You're going to go back. No. Yes. Not yes, if I can. I only did it because it's out of town. Okay, we'll see about so, it. All right, all right. Yeah, hey. Yeah, hey. <laughs> all right, let's do a quick episode. Uh, look at the feedback real quick. Now it's time for feedback with Brian and Tom on Flame Radio. Yeah. Our uh, cord cutter trucker writes in, Brian, I hate you. After many times <laughs> hearing you speak about Breaking Bad on Twitch shows, I decided to check it out. Holy crap. Now I'm addicted, which is why I hate you. Being a truck driver, it's hard to keep current. I have the first three seasons on DVD. When I heard four was released, I've called every Walmart in every major city I've passed. This show is worse than crack. And the third season ended with an, oh, God, when is season four starting moment? I do have Netflix, but Truck Stop Internet, as you can imagine, isn't great. Just thought I'd let you know. Keep up the show. Yeah, dude, how great is that? Also, we got an email from Hate Bad Design, who I believe did the uh, the intro bumper for uh, the NSFW movie draft. Yep. He went ahead and put together a uh, chart 
actually detailing who's been winning in the NSFW winter movie draft. And the trend shows that, Brian that tr winning. Uh, wow. Actually, wait, wait, you still have another movie coming out, though, right, Tom? I do. So you're going you're gonna to see a bump. This, this is the question is whether or not 1010 is enough to bump you up to the next level. This one's going to be a squeaker. I'm way stoked. Yeah, it's going to be fun to see the race to the end. I still think you're going to probably nudge out in front of me. I don't believe it. I think, I think 1010 will make over 70 million, and you're going to rock it. What are we, Canadians? No, I'm going to crush you. You're going down, <laughs> Brushwood. I will grind you under my heel with Tintin laughing as you I fall to pieces. your apartment, sir. Uh, hey, man, before we wrap things up, I just want to give a huge thanks to Corey Coleman for slumming with us. Thanks so much, Yeah, man. thanks, man. It was where, good. Where, where, where can we be able to go see more of your stuff? Spill.com. Spill.com. That's as simple as that. Done and done. That's it for this episode of Frame Rate. You can find us on the web. At twit.tv slash fr, you can email us framerate show at gmail.com. We'll see you next time.